to talk about professional significators in traditional astrology, especially Mercury, Venus, and Mars. In traditional astrology, the oldest information comes from Ptolemy. Of course, those who came after him made various editions, but Ptolemy's work has always been fundamental. Nowadays, when it comes to the identified profession for a client or for a chart that we work on, most of us uh, looks directly to MC and its ruler. Additionally, we may look into the any aspects who, additionally, uh, we may look into the any planets who aspects to MC. But ancient astrologers followed a different path and they had rules, uh, a lot of rules, rules and rules. So how can we identify the professional significators in a chart uh, using traditional, traditional perspective? We will discuss these methods very briefly, then we will uh, move on to Mercury, Venus, and Mars as a significators. As I mentioned earlier, as ancient astrologers followed a series of rules. First rule is that they begin analyzing the chart with the ascendant. Uh, unlike our modern times. Bonatti suggests that we should first look into the first house to see if there is any planet. If there is, this planet most likely will be the professional significator. If there is no planet on the first house, then we can move on to the 10th house. So they considered the MC as a second approach. Later on, uh, we can check uh, seventh house and the fourth houses. Yes, as you notice, we check only angular houses. This is the biggest difference between modern and classical approach when it comes to the identified profession. Today, mostly we first look at the MC, as I said earlier, and its ruler only, uh, per, then perhaps planets in the 10th house and the aspects if you go any deeper. Classical, ast classical astrology analyzes the ascendant as, a as first. This difference seems to be simple, but it is an important one because outcome will affect our judgment. I would like to show you an example here. This chart belongs to a um, relative of mine. As you can see, 23 degree Gemini is rising. And when we look at the first house, we see the ruler Mercury here on 28 degree of Gemini here. It's very close to the ascendant. It is most likely the professional significator. But if we first would have been looking to the Aquarius MC here and its ruler Saturn, or if you wanna add to modern ruler Uranus, we would think that this person might be interested in a tech business, a scientist, an engineer, a pilot or in a waiter. He, would, he could be into electronics, but he has all Mercury in jobs. He's a merchant and accountant and an accountant. He's engaged in trade and accounting all of his life. Mercury, it's in own sign Gemini and has a nice trine to do MC as well. Mercury trying to MC here. And part of profession is uh, on 10 degree Gemini as well. So Mercury is the ruler planet again. As you can see on this example, first house planets could be profession significator. Traditionally, if Mercury, Venus and Mars is an angular house, then they have the priority as a professional significator. Also, if there is any other planet replaced in an angular house, we should take a note of those planets as well. They might give, any, uh, they might give us clues that we will consider these planet combinations. After we identify of these planets, we should evaluate um, their position to the sun. I mean, are they oriental or are they occidental? We can also apply this for moon as well. According to the traditional views, a professional significator can be any planet who rises before the sun, oriental, it becomes oriental in that case, or any planet uh, which rises after the moon becomes occidental. 
especially if the planet located is in one of the angular houses, first, tenth, seventh, and fourth houses, and in this order, uh, it, it will be uh, important. Asian texts emphasize that other planets are stronger when they are oriental of the sun, while inner planets are stronger when they are occidental of the sun. So Mars is the outer planet, is stronger when he rises before sun, but oriental, uh, sorry, the Mars is stronger when he rises before sun as oriental, but Mercury and Venus are stronger when they arise after sun. Astronomically, they are occidental, but traditionally we consider them as oriental when they, ri when they rise after the sun. Also, we will check the moon phase. Uh, if it's waxing, the moon is oriental. If waning, it is occidental. Now we can analyze the MC. When it comes to the analyze the MC, we see that there are different methods and calculations. I will not go deeper every rule here tonight because it takes a lot of time to explain, but I will just summarize for you. And um, Schoner says, uh, Schoner, said, Schoner has a couple of rules in that order. So he says, look at the 10th house, look at the ruler of the 10th house, check if the ruler makes any aspects to the MC, check Mercury, Venus and Mars. And he says, check all mutants of possible significators of profession. So he mentions al -Mutan. What does it mean here? So why should I suggest to check al -Mutan? Because not everybody has planets on the uh, angular houses in their charts. What happens if there is no planets in the angular houses? So we calculate the al of that houses. Almutan uh, is comes from an Arabic uh, astrologers and it literally means strong in power. So with the Almutan calculations, we can find out the house, ca house cusps who has the strongest and most essential dignities in a certain uh, astrological degree, in a certain zodiac degree. After all the calculations, uh, first, tenth, seventh, and fourth houses Almutans, we should take a note all of the findings because we will decide what the significator at the end. I find it very useful to write them all, so uh, I suggest you to do, do the same. Schoenar also says that we should check Arabic part of part of profession and its ruler in the chart as well. So we, we take a note of uh, those two. After that, it comes to identify the chart if it's a diurnal or nocturnal one. That's another difference between traditional astrology and the modern astrology in the, uh, is the distinction between diurnal and nocturnal charts. Traditional astrologers always pays attention whether the chart is diurnal or nocturnal one. If uh, a native was born when the sun over the horizon, we should also check prenatal moon and uh, its first aspect planet. If it's a certain, uh, if it's a night chart, we can have a look moon's first aspect as well. So this planet would be considered as a professional significator, no matter the nature of the aspect is. It would be a conjunction, sextile, square, trine, and opposition. So it should be all uh, Ptolemic aspects. If we have a nocturnal chart, we should uh, also consider the planet which will make the first aspect with the pars fortunate, fortunate. And another rule comes lastly from Schoner, and it says check the first triplicity ruler of the 10th house. So, uh, so far I talked about a lot of rules and I know sometimes it is confusing. It's not easy job to find out professional significator in a chart while using traditional base. After we go over these rules, we keep them in mind and we analyze the chart. As I said, we can take a note and we will see them clearly. 
Now let's go deep on the universal significators of profession. There are three significators of profession as noted in traditional texts, and they are today's subject, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. All ancient astrologers considered them as universal significators of profession. This three planet takes priority by sign and houses they are in. So what makes this, these three planets to gain priority? First of all, we need to consider that there was not many professions back then. The ancients taught the sun and the moon symbolizes kings and queens. Robert Zoller explains that the sun is the creator of the life and considered as king, and the moon is the creator of body considered as queen. And the kings and queens did not have any professions. So luminaries were not suitable for common men on, and women. Therefore, uh, they are not considered as a professional significator in traditional astrology. Same goes for Jupiter and Saturn. Jupiter considered for priesthood, uh, priesthood and it was a religious calling, not a profession. And the Saturn represented farmers back then. So you were born into a family of farmers Job passed from father to son. Remaining, remaining planets were Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Remember, there were not various and detailed professions back in the ancient times as well. Mars represented warrior, warriors, soldiers, lawmakers. Venus represents artists in general and beauty. And Mercury represented the merchants and scribes. Each of these universal significators of profession is considered as a second ascendant. And the planets aspecting each may be important as identifying the profession. So let's go a little bit more uh, details of these three planets, shall we? we? We all know this guy, Hermes. In Greek mythology, he is the son of Zeus and Maya, who is the eldest daughter of Atlas. Hermes is the messenger of gods, and he has an influential and admired personality. But we cannot say that he always well behaved. He was mischievous and rogue in spirited. Uh, Hermes often played tricks and revealed his cunnings. Despite his tricks, the gods relied on him uh, for many important tasks. This multi-spirited God who has many talents made inventions that enabled the progress of civilization from numbers to musical instruments. He has also been the master of wide uh, variety of groups such as travelers, inventors, athletes, uh, thieves and liars, so on. So he's the messenger, we said. In one of um, his early adventures, he tricked Apollo. He stole Apollo's herd. But when Apollo find out that his cattle are missing and all of the signs points Hermes, he could not hide it anymore. And he made a trade agreement with him, with him and solved the problem for good. Even though Hermes has resolved his dispute with Apollo, he was still in tr trouble due to his mischief. His father Zeus summoned him to scold him, but Hermes enchanted uh, Zeus and convinced him that he would never ever lie or stole again. Of course, Hermes did not neglect to ask something in return for this big promise. He asked to be messenger of, of Zeus. Zeus agreed, uh, agreed this proposal and gave his son a pair of gold winged sandals that allowed him to travel at wind speed. The white brim hat and messenger stuff that Zeus gave to Hermes along with them became the symbol of his duty as messenger of the gods. The gods trusted him with their secrets. Hermes generally succeeded in his duties and thanks to his skill and cunning, he even managed to keep his promise to Zeus that he would never lie again. As a result, where Hermes is, there is a practical um, intelligence, a little mischief and deceit, 
there's music, there's invention, there's a bargaining and commerce, carrying messages, increasing communication and trust and keeping their secrets. So uh, we should remember those uh, points uh, to look at the charts while we are looking at the charts. As a profession, Mercury represents uh, speed and quickness, commerce, language, language skills, fraud, understanding, reason, logic, lying, analy analyzing, small devices, computers, interpretation, and yes, astrology. Represented by scribers, bankers, merchants, teachers, scientists, lawyers, thieves, reporters, tax officials, astrologers, of course, children and young brothers. In positive use, Mercury uh, gives, Mercury gives a creator use of mind and skill and, and the sharp grip, but there are some risks also. What, what could be this risk? The mind is as close to the ego as Mercury is to the sun. So irritability, anxiety, chatter, hyperactivity, inconsistency, viciousness, anxiety, um, critical, playful, and cynical could be the risks. According to the Asians, what kind of professions Mercury represents? If we have a look, the Schoner says uh, he represents teachers, merchants, inventors, professions that compare with the power of stars and require reading and books in general. Lily mentioned that letters, numbers, writing, learning, arithmetic, astrology, commerce, mechanical inventorship. And if there is a no good ang ang angle with Jupiter, it is noted that it cannot make much more money. And men of letters, mathematician, philosopher, astrologer, merchant, secretary, sculptor, thieves, tailors, money-making with interest, accounting, as you can see here. According to the Asians, again, Mercury as a professional uh, significator, Puchalami says, uh, writer, businessman, accountables, teachers, bankers, prophets, he says astrologers to take paperwork and document and translators. Firmicus Maternus says mathematicians and astrologers. Altabari says clerk, uh, astrologer and ar arithmeticists. Alburini says merchants, calculator, astrologers, philosophers, poets and bookseller. So what happened if the Mercury is in the 10th house? How should we interpret this? This position can bring success in communicating well with senior management and authority figures, especially. It is useful for professions in commerce, writing, te writing teaching, and mathematics. Professions that require mental activity stands out. Success comes with the ability to plan carefully and think strategically. It gives a tendency to do private sector studies, academic studies, uh, writing, journalism, politics, and uh, communion sector, communication sector, I'm sorry. And it's contact, contacts with other uh, planets. If it's in contact with uh, Venus, perfumer, florist, painters, artists, wine trade, uh, medical, pharmaceutical business, spice business, clothing, and fashion, we can think of this. And Ptolemy mentioned in Tetro Biblos that Mercury and Venus can have many artistic gifts to the native. In contact with Jupiter, preacher, a rhetorician, lawyer, education, high ranking employees, writer, clergyman, presenter, speaker, hospitality, business and management. Or a speaker, 
it can be a speaker in the international arena, international public relation, uh, relations specialist, perhaps, a YouTuber, Instagram influencer. These are the modern time professions for Mercury points out. In contact with Saturn, uh, commentators, divine doers, writers, those who deal in magic. I find it very uh, interesting because with this combination, I think Stephen King immediately. I think he deals with magic. When uh, we will have a, a look at his chart in a minute, I will explain you more detailly. And if it's contact with Mars, uh, if the sun is also including in this config configuration, fire, temperature, and metal related works, cooking, laboratory work, commander in chief, we can say that. And in contact with Neptune, a poet or a singer, as well as a writer, we can say that too. So I wrote down some professions that I think of here. I will not read them uh, all, but I'll leave it in the screen for a while. You can have a look, but a couple of them is like, you know, astronomers, careers, doctors, editors, apprentice, coach, and the second page, there are some historians, journalists, locksmiths, narrator, notary, mentor, kind of jobs we see, post office officers I see here, speakers, weather forecasters, travel agents, teachers, textile workers, and here comes our uh, example, sorry. So this is Stephen King's chart. As you can see, 29 degree Cancer rising here. No planet on the first house uh, and on the 10th house and the seventh houses. These two planets, Pluto and Saturn is on, it's very close to the second house cusp. You see, this is 19 degree Leo, and they are like 14 and 18 degree Leo. So I considered them on the second house. And we have Mercury here on the fourth house. And it is most likely the professional significator because it's in the angular house. So we should also pay attention to this Mars over here. Uh, 24 degree of Cancer, uh, it's very close to the Ascendant, and it's also the 10th house ruler here, as you can see, Aries. So we should take a note of that Mars as well. Both Mars and Mercury are oriental of the Sun, and uh, once more they are, uh, they are the significators. His Mercury is in conjunction with Neptune here. It gives a very artistic imagination and ability, ability to write. And we see it's sextiling to Saturn here. And Asian says he creates magic in his work. His imaginations creates magic in all of his uh, books. That's what I was uh, talking about, the magic. So part of profession I wrote down here, I calculated before and some uh, astrology pro programs can help you to find out as well. And part of profession is 27 degrees Scorpio here. A conjunct with Jupiter and South Node and Mars is the ruler of this uh, profession, a part of profession and its trines to the part of profession. As Mars uh, replaced in the uh, 12th house, in classical astrology, 12th house has seen as enemy house. It represents hidden places, represents fear. And in King's chart, it might represent that his creativity, creativity and power, because Mars comes from the inside and he has ability to take that fear and turn it to a profession. Mars is trying to do Jupiter here. And Jupiter is the omniton of profession. Yeah. 
So Mars and Jupiter is in also mutual uh, reception, as we can see. Mars, the ruler of the Scorpio, and Jupiter is exalted uh, in Cancer. So he has a creative uh, imagination in he and he has the ability to write them all. You know, Jupiter makes everything bigger and bigger and everything he touches. So Stephen King is the one of, one of the most published writer of all. So it's not surprising. If you look at the moon phase here, sun is here and the moon is here on 16th Sag. Moon is waxing and since this is a night chart, we will look at the moon first aspect and it's trying to Saturn here. Saturn is about building things and I can say that he build, builds different worlds in every book, right? So we can see in that in his chart. So let's move to the Venus. Venus, if you look at its uh, mythology, uh, her father is Uranus and mother is Gaia. She is known as Aphrodite. She was born in Cyprus in a pearl from the form of waves, like described in the picture. Um, she usually, um, she gives love, joy do, for those who love her and worship her. And she causes pain and lifelong suffering for those who do not worship her. Her blessing is not uh, only for humans, uh, it is also for all nature. She beautifies, resurrects, blooms and enriches everything, everywhere she touches. Aphrodite was beautiful uh, with a sweet and seductive uh, smile. Um, there are always um, love affairs in the midst about her. So she's a, she was a great, uh, beautiful woman. And in all, all the myths, either she's having a love affair or she's interfering in other people's adventures. Besides being the goddess, she was a, a sensation of love and passion. And with these quali uh, qualities often appeared outside the marriage in myths. So she was a wife, uh, she and her husband Hephaestus are in odds. Aphrodite is beautiful, elegant, and spends her time making love. On the other hand, her husband was ugly and limp, and he spent his time working all the time. Although the opposite poles were said to attract each other, this couple never, never got um, along well. Since the Aphrodite was the goddess of love, she was inherently generous with love. Therefore, it's not uh, surprising that she has many, uh, many extramarital affairs. So the most well-known uh, of was with Hephaestus, half-brother Ares, I mean Mars. Aphrodite falls in love with Ares and uh, only God everyone despises. He was. And um, they have a passionate love affair and they kept it a secret for a while uh, they had kids as well. And then her husband found out about this affair and there was some punishment uh, the myths goes on. But uh, so what, what are we looking at in our charts uh, when the Venus comes? So uh, it, she represents the being close to someone, feeling comfort and harmony conveying their feeling is, where we can see it. We can see it at the social events, fine arts, people we like, places, food, music, value, valuables, reconciliation, peace, parties, and partnership. She represents relationship and it is very similar to the earth. So we are looking uh, for our other half, like soulmate. If you look at her functions, uh, peace of mind with oneself, we can say inner peace, harmony uh, with environment and the agreement of no nations with each other, symbolizes refined artistic feelings, socialize, love and sharing. 
in positive uh, use, uh, we can say uh, energy carries love, attention, and pleasure. So need to be love, intimacy comes to the first. Sharing love, uh, generosity of the spirit. What kind of risks we can see in our charts? Our tastes uh, are as close to our ego as Venus proximity to the sun. So it's very close. So it can be greed, ownership. Aphrodite, for example, would not accept uh, the beauty of anyone but herself. She always wanted to be the most beautiful. And we can say pleasure and infidelity as well. What kind of professions she represents according to the Asians? Ptolemy says, uh, those who engage in the flower trade, perfume makers, ointment makers, wine makers, color painters, jewelry makers, medical drug makers, dealers in spices, painters, and vendor of apparel. Firmicus Maternus says, goldsmiths, gold platters, workers in a gold leaf, silversmiths, musicians, of course, organists, painters, innkeepers, tavern keepers, cook, perfume, perfumers, makers of the rats of festival and sacred occasions, things needed for pleasure. Alcobitus mentioned musical instruments, adornments, pretty forms, playing backgammon and chess, dancing, idleness, the arrangement of garlands, wearing crowns, Clean, cleanliness, clothing, ornaments, gold and silver, showing off, love of uh, amusement, laughter, joy, perfumes, scents, uh, fermented drinks, uh, tranquility of mind and towards everyone, generosity, friendliness, passionate love, flirtation, and adherence to the religion. Alburini says the works of beauty and magnificence, fond of bazaars, commerce, measuring by weight, length and bulk, uh, dealing in pictures, goldsmith work, tailoring, manufacturing perfumes, dealing in pearls, gold and sil silver ornaments, mask, white and green clothes, maker of clowns and diadems, accompanying singing, composing songs, playing the lute, feasts and games and gaming. If we continue, Schoner says the native will associate herself or himself to the works of appearance, matters having to do with spicy smells and fragrances or to painting, uh, to the dyeing and uh, weaving clothes or also the merchandising of things that have to do with the fragrances, such as the essence of flower, etc. William Lilly says, musicians, gamesters, silkmen, mercers, linen drapers, painters, jewelers, players, uh, women tilers, choristers, fiddlers, pipers, when joined with the moon, ballad singers especially, this is interesting, perfumers, Steam, steam stresses, picture drawers, engravers, upholsters, uh, limners, glovers, all such as uh, sell those commodities with adorned women, either body or in face. So what, what Venus represents when she's on the tent house? This position brings the support of uh, authority figures. It is very likely that it will bring success in the social and artistic field. field. Partnerships can bring success and partnerships can, uh, with the high authorities are evident. It is in the ideal position in the fields of art. Again, I will not read all of the uh, professions I added here, but you can see architects, uh, ballet and ballerinas, ballet songs, banker, bank employees, beauticians, botanists, cosmetics, dancers, 
fashion models, maybe fine arts. And on the second page, we can see hoteliers, investors, judges, painter, pandomain, pianists, receptionists, women's wear, as we said. And here comes to our example. As an example, I have Da Vinci's, Leonardo Da Vinci's chart. I'm sure many, uh, many have you came familiar with his chart along with your studies. Now we can have a look to professional significators in the chart. So 11 degree Sagittarius is rising here. No planets on the first house. We will take a look at the Saturn on the 10th house. We will take a note of the Saturn and it is also exalted in Libra. No planets on the seventh house and we, we should take a note of this Mercury on the fourth house here. MC ruler is Venus here. Is also um, oriental to the sun and uh, this is a night chart. So we look at the moon's first aspect uh, and it is sextile to the Venus here, moon to the Venus, as you can see. Part of profession is 12th degree Taurus and the ruler is Venus. So we take a note of Venus as well, one more time. And profession Almuten is also Venus. So Venus got our attention multiple times we can say that this Venus is very strong as a profession significator. And we see that beauty, aesthetic uh, and art in Leonardo da Vinci's work. So everything he touched, he touched with art, with aesthetic. But we shouldn't um, eliminate Saturn and uh, this Saturn and this Mercury uh, because the Tantau Saturn uh, give, gave him all the engineering and building abilities. And the fourth house Mercury gives him all the calculation and the handicrafts. So all these all combining Da Vinci's work. Artistics, um, art, beauty, calculation, engineering, building bridges, building with, uh, with building all with art. So. Venus is the professional significator in his chart, but so does Saturn and Mercury and all combining, uh, it comes with art and aesthetics, we can say that. So it's time, the last planet, uh, Mars. As you can see, I took this picture a couple of years ago in Zeugma Museum. And I wanted to show you here as well because I love this picture. I wasn't expecting to see him, but when I saw him, I took the pictures immediately. So Mars, uh, his father is Zeus and the mother Hera. Ares is the god of war and lived for fight and shed blood. And he enjoyed the way people fight each other very, very much. We see that he mentioned on many he mentioned on many poems and myths, uh, Spartans uh, especially worshipped them uh, before every war. Uh, Aris's de uh, depictions show him he's wearing armor and helmets, carrying a uh, spear and sword and shield. You can see here, maybe perhaps there is a spear and shield and the helmet we can see here as well on the picture. And um, Ares was the god of war, as we said, but he, he wasn't always the victor. This is important, I guess. In fact, he was defeated in many battles throughout the myths. So we should also consider this. His principle, desire to move, action, take an initiative, physical energy. Uh, his motivated impulse is self-revealing and attacking and acting uh, decisively, sudden, all of a sudden. 
he needs is achieving desires, physical and sexual excitement. Where we can see that, we can see that in leadership, impulsive action, diligence, sexuality, death, weapons, equipment, machinery, machinery, uh, war, sports, uh, able to, to endure difficulties. His functions are the power of ego in action. He is the warrior spirit, warrior spirit, passion to win, and competition. He likes competition a lot. Personal desire towards the universal goal. In positive use, uh, courage, initiative, uh, resilience. Willpower driven to a coherent purpose. Treatments and surgery. What kind of uh, risks might be shown? For example, impatience, brutality, cruelty, use of force on others, threats inability to move forward, insecurity, inactivity. So according to the Asians, Mars is the professional significator. Ptolemy says being configured with, uh, with the sun, uh, it will produce persons who operate by means of fire, for instance, cooks, as well as those who work in the copper, uh, brass and other metals by melting, burning and casting. If Mars be separated from the sun, he will make shipwrights, smiths, agriculturists, stonemasons, carpenters, and subordinated laborers. Firmicus Matanus says, uh, skills connected with iron and fire. Alkebitus mentioned every profession involving fire or what is done with iron, such as uh, beating with hammers and pressing out swords. Alburini says, lawmaking, selling and making armor, uh, blacksmith craft, grooms, shepherds, butchers, veterinary surgeons, circumcisers, sellers of hunts, and also cheetahs, boars, and wolves, uh, glass boxes, wooden casps, uh, brigandage, contention, contention housebreaking, Highwaymen, grave robbers, and prison and torture uh, and execution. Schoner says if it has an aspect with the sun, the native can be worked with fire, like a gold miner or a jeweler. William Lilly says generals of armies, colonels, captains, any soldiers having commands in armies, all manner of soldiers, physicians, uh, apothecaries, surgeons, alchemists, gunners, butchers, marshals, surgeons, bailiffs, hang hangmen, thieves, uh, armorers, watchmakers, as you can see, butchers, tailors, uh, all kinds of swords and knives, cutlers, uh, dyers, cook, carpenters, gamesters, uh, bearwards, tanners, and couriers. Mars is in the 10th house. This position points to the challenges to come um, by authority figures. Child owner often struggles to succeed in his uh, career or maybe need to work hard or even uh, have to fight for his career because Mars re represents a struggle, a war over, over on the MC and uh, have a high desire to gain credibility and show off uh, in his career, maybe. If Mars in contact with other planets, uh, if it's in contact with Mercury, sc sculptures, armor makers, wrestlers, soldiers, and operators, spies, or informants. If it's in contact with Jupiter, those who earn honors in war or in work life, uh, those who are careful and persevering in their work, it gives uh, the characteristics of being curious about foreigners. In contact with Venus, dye-related works, perfumes and ointments, imitation and dancing, medicine, if the Jupiter angles despair, 
uh, he can uh, he is associated with women dominated business. Here again, I have some Martian professions for you. We see athletes, acrobats, baker, backsmith, butcher, hunter, golfer, gladiator, leader, lifeguard, mechanics, pirates, pharmacists, police, steel workers, surgeons, soldier, tennis player, wrestler. And here comes our example. This is Rafael Nadal, Rafa Nadal. And as we mentioned over here, it's tennis player. Mars is the indicator of tennis player. So I chose his chart as an example. And he's my favorite uh, tennis player. I love him so much. So I wanted to share his chart with you and analyze his chart with you. So we see nine degree Scorpio rising in his chart over here. And um, there is no planet in the first. I mean, Saturn is here, but five degrees Sag Sagittarius, and it's very close to the second house cusp. So I can consider this Saturn on the second house, actually. No planets on the 10th house, no planets on the seventh house, and no planets on the fourth house. So there's no planet on the uh, angular houses. What we should we do, what we should look at, we, we have to look at the Almutan of this uh, professions. We, uh, we, we should have a look at the Almutan of this house cusps. So I looked at it and it's um, Saturn. So we noted of the Saturn as a professional Almutan. Here I wrote it down for you. The 10th house ruler is um, Sun and it's in Gemini in his chart. So we can interpret as recognition, fame, uh, because, uh, because of the Sun. And the Sun has aspect to the MC. It's a sextile, which is good for him. We can check Mercury, Venus, and Mars as a professional significators. And when we check, they're all oriental uh, for the sun, of the sun. Mercury rules Gemini, and Venus uh, has triplicity ruler in Cancer, and Mars is exalted in Capricorn. So they are uh, very, very good in his chart. They're all strong significators. So we look into the part of profession, which is four degree areas. And um, the ruler is Mars. So we Mars is an indicator for the tennis player. So we, we, he, we see that the Mars is mentioned again. It is a day chart. Sun is above the horizon. And uh, moon is waning over here. And the prenatal uh, moon is on the second uh, degree Sagittarius, so over here. And the first aspect of the moon is the um, conjunction to the Saturn, as you can see here. Well, I don't know if you are a fan like me, but in court, I see that he creates and builds a game from the beginning, like an engineering engineer point by point, he counts every point, he fights for every point. So Mars is the indicator for pro tennis player and he's strong and he's quick and he's on the every inch of the court and he never lets his guard go down. He fights all the way to the end of the game. So this is really, I can see, his, see this in his chart. Venus is in Cancer, we said. And uh, this is also give, gives him an artistic move. So he's really artistic in the court. And uh, this Mars also um, sextiles to the um, Jupiter here. So he's like a um, soldier, like a super concentrated. Um, and 
sometimes we can see all the um, indicators uh, on the native uh, in one job. So Rafael Nadal is really, really um, great example for the indicators in his chart. Okay, and this is the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed. And these are the books that I study most and I took uh, notes and this is the professional significator in traditional astrology my teacher Önar Döşer has wrote. And I, um, it's very useful this Rex E. Bills, uh, the rulership book. Uh, it's my, you know, I look uh, this book all the time. I check the professions on this book. So I strongly advise if you can have a look, if you are interested. In the mythology part, I checked classical mythology with Dr. Nancy Connor and classic Greek mythology, Shefik Can, a Turkish uh, mythologist. And these are the, these are my um, contact information. Please don't hesitate to contact if you have any question. It might take my time, but I will definitely reply if you send me an email or ask a question. Thank you so much. This has been great. Do you? Um, Thank you. Can we now go into uh, just answer a few of the questions we have? Sure. Okay. Let um, me click the questions. Oh, I well. can read them for you if you if you'd like. Yes, please. Okay, great. Okay, the first one is, what if Mercury is combust? Um, what does that mean for the profession? Uh, well, the ancients, I didn't see any information about the combust, but we should also, uh, we can take a note and we can interpret in that, uh, the, in the chart. Great. But being combust doesn't change uh, the outcome as a profession. Okay. Interesting. Okay, the next, and by the way, I'm monitoring both the chat and the questions and you're in the chat, people are just flooding you with compliments and their and their gratitude. So I, I want to note that as as we go here. Um, the next question is, um, can I you can this be used with whole the whole sign house system? Sure, it can be used. It depends on what kind of uh, what you are studies, what you're comfortable with. So mm -hmm. I usually work with the Placidus, so I will continue to work with Placidus. You can also think in the background as a, a whole sign, but uh, while you are identified the significator, it's not uh, good to uh, change the house systems all mm -hmm. the time. So it makes you to make you know profession for the chart. Mm -hmm. So I advise choose one house system and work uh, on that system. That makes sense. Great. Uh, let's see. We have two people asking the same question. Uh, mm -hmm. They want to know um, how to determine what the profession at Atu Almaton is. Um, and then is it based on the Lord of the degree, deacon or approximate closest planet? It's about the degree. As I said, uh, Almuten is the most mm -hmm. dignified um, planet uh, on the certain zodiac degree. Mm -hmm. So for example, if we are looking at the house cusp, so we, can, we, we should calculate the house cusp, cap, cusp degree i'm sorry i couldn't say it <laughs> no that's okay I need some water <laughs> i hope it answers the question yeah and you've gone over some i think people are just wanting to um go over a couple because a couple of things you've covered and they just they they're asking the next question is um can you clarify again what the part of profession is and how to calculate it uh, well, Which usually, explained, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's hard to calculate it, but you can do it. Uh, I used um, astrology software's findings, for example, solar fire calculates this for you. 
So I checked the solar fire um, calculation, but it can be done, but it is difficult to explain. So it's another maybe subject to a webinar. We can mm -hmm. do that. We can calculate yeah. how to find out, but um, it can be done. Uh, Great. For this uh, webinar, I calculate, I use the solar fires findings. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, and I just want to let everyone know that if you have a question to ask, please drop it in the Q&A. Um, I would really appreciate that. So the next question I have is, what would you say about, um, let's see, Mercury in the 10th house conjunct moon in a day chart? Is that, does that change the profession? Well, we should consider, yeah, we should, we can consider all the aspects, especially moon uh, gives some, you know, uh, identify profession, but mm -hmm. we can consider that as well. Great. Uh, yeah, it sounds like it's all just goes into this holistic system. Um, mm -hmm. And then let's see, we have a question about what do you think is uh, rule, rules pilots? Is it Mars or Mercury? Well, I think both we can say that, uh, but mostly Mercury because Mercury um, rules hands also. So the pilot and the, uh, needs a calculation um, ability. Mm -hmm. The Asian says the Mercury is related with the mind, with the brain, so how it works with the mathematics. Uh, if you considered all of the Asians considered Mercury as a mathematician. Mm -hmm. So the background of the pilot, uh, there is a lot of work, a lot of mathematics and the hands. So I say Mercury mostly. Okay, that makes a lot of sense actually. Um, and then the last three, the last few questions I'm seeing are more in line with uh, personal chart questions. So I'm curious if uh, you you are taking bookings for one-on-one um, -on -one readings, and if if you all are more are interested in that, you can get these types of questions answered with that. Is that something that you are available for through this yes, website please. here? Yes, Great. please. They can in e emailed me, so I. They, I cannot say anything in the personal charts because we, we need to consider the chart as a whole. Right. So I cannot give any specific uh, details if, it, if I cannot see the whole chart, it would be wrong. Yes. So they can contact me. Yes, and, uh, and we're getting to just as we, as we wrap up, we're getting so many people saying thank you for this wonderful presentation. I personally get a lot from it as well. So. I'm very excited to, to play around with this even more on my chart and with clients and friends and yes, everyone. And we're, as I'm talking, we're just getting so many, so much gratitude for you. And Kepler is certainly, um, certainly grateful for you as well. And, and we look forward to continuing to, we're, oh, we have one last question, the person do we mind asking one last question as we wrap up? Sure, okay. sure, why not? Um, so let's see, what would you say if there is an, uh, an override? Okay, let's see. Does the third uh, and ninth house axis override angular houses? Um, and that is the IC and MC axis. Mm -hmm. Well, third and the ninth houses is communication and education access, but the Asians are very clear on the rules. So they only took angular houses. So where the planets are the most uh, strongest. So in that case, we cannot uh, say that if we took, you know, third and ninth houses, they cannot be a profession significator but mm -hmm. we should consider the chart as a whole. We can look into it, but ancient, the traditional ways, traditional astrologers were specifically said, uh, look at the uh, angular houses, one, mm -hmm. tenth, seventh and fourth houses as a profession significator. Okay, great. Um, so I wanna thank you again for, for donating your time today. Again, this is a community webinar, so um, if you all appreciated today, we'd really, um, I just want to vocalize our scholarship fund and, 
any any amount matters. If you just want to navigate over to our donations page on Kepler, we'd really appreciate it. And I just want to reaffirm again the gratitude we have for you, our presenter. Um, we look forward to continue working with you. And this was just absolutely fabulous. So so thank, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank have you, a good Caitlin, evening. and thank you. Yeah, thank you, Kepler, for providing me this platform. Thank you, everybody, for you know giving their time and listening to me. Thank you for joining me, and uh, thank you so much. And hope to see you again. Mm -hmm.